day in New York City. We listening to the hip hop city of the world with the R. I'm over here, my man Chase Baker. Yeah, yeah. All the way from Australia to BK. Or BK to Australia, I should say. Yeah, your boy Chase Baker represent too much for high end blankets. We ate them, not fair money by any means. Brooklyn. Yeah. So uh, we're going to take a little break. We're going to come back to the show. And uh, we're going to get in right now. Yeah. 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 You know, like, I really find that interesting, man, that you you set up shop out there in Australia. You know, because a lot of times dudes will try to set up shop in their hometown, which would be BK for you. Yeah. But you went a whole different route with it, man. Yeah. I was originally out there playing basketball and um, pro basketball player for the last seven seasons. And then, you know, I made the switch to the major city, which is Melbourne, and ran to some, you know, some dudes who had the same vision I did. You know, which made the kid back. First lady of Tesla, and um, you know, we just got the thing rolling. Wait, what's the real difference between the game out here, out there, versus the game out here? Um, the difference is, is uh, you know, hip hop is not that big. You know, most in of Australia. In Australia, yeah, most of the uh, the regulators are run by you know the older businessmen, in, you know, the forties and fifties that grew up on rock and roll. So you're not really giving hip hop a chance. But you know, every once in a while, the hip hop out there is being compared to what's out here. Yeah. And, and the difference is, is um, it's culture. The things we go through and the things we grow up, you know, uh, unfortunately, well, unfortunately for them, and fortunately for us, you know, our struggles and stuff is looked at as sort of cool. And it's sort of like, you know, the benchmark of what real hip hop should be, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, in Australia, you know, they may not go through some of the things we, just, we, we go through. So, you know, I was, I was fortunate enough to, you know, be able to come up out of all the struggles I've been through, put it to the music, and even though I'm in Australia, it's just geared to hip-hop everything. You know? And it all relates to one thing, which is hip-hop. Exactly. Uh, I mean, but you started playing ball out there professionally. Uh, like, when did you first realize that you can actually make a living with hip-hop? Well, Cause I, was, I mean, I know you make good money playing ball. Yeah. So you didn't have to actually go the route of being a rapper. You could have just stayed playing ball, had a good life. And what made you go full force with this? Yeah. Well, well, my first three seasons, I was playing in a country town called Warnley, which is about three hours away from the major city. I made the switch to the major city, and I ran into um, you know, some friends of mine that, that you know, that's from Harlem. One of my friends. In Australia? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, his Shout dad. Shout out to Harlem. Harlem, all the way, you know. He's on um, Nick. His dad is, is a professional basketball player out there. He's a legend. So he became naturalized, and then his kids became naturalized. So I ran into my boy Kid Mac. He had a show at a, at a club called School Bar. And, um, School Bar? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it was it was sort of like an agent night, but he was part of a group called the Six Aces. And when, even though I was always writing stuff down and able to put things on the paper, when I saw Kid back rock that show out, I said, this is something that I want to jump into and do. I saw it. I had the resources. He brought me to Jamaica and Stream AV, too much variety, and then it was just a beautiful marriage after that. Beautiful. Kid Mac, right? And wasn't it Kid Mac? Kid Mac. Shout out to Kid Mac. Yeah. This kid definitely changed your life. Yeah, like he, he was up there, um, you know, I was one of my first shows that I've ever been to. So you in the hood, you, you know about people like Jay-Z, Biggie and all that, but you don't really get out and go to the shows much. So when I saw Matt, and I saw him, him kill it, and I saw the crowd so. react, reaction to, to him, and especially being from a whole other culture, it was an Asian night, and I saw him kill it, I said, this is what I can do. I want to do this. And I really put the step forward to doing it. So, uh, I mean, I, I listened to uh, some dudes. Like, when I was researching your bio, um, I, I uh, listened to some dudes called Hilltop Hoods. Yeah. Bliss and Iso. Bliss and Esso. Esso. Yeah. And uh, Coolism. Yeah. It's kind of nice out there. Yeah. But I definitely noticed that they didn't have the swag out there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I said, I think I think it's cultural, man, and, and my opinion on it is that, you know, I, I hate to see, you know, hip-hop being separated. I think if you go through struggles and you're in Australia, it don't have to be about guns, drugs, no. and violence. You talk about what's on your heart, and you put it to that music, and you put that beat, and people jump up and dance, that's hip-hop. 
and it's your life, you know what I mean? So it, it doesn't always have to be what, what we go, you know what I mean? So of course our life is on, on, a, on a whole other level and the things that we go through is a lot more, more visual and somebody might, from over here might not gravitate towards that because it's more toned down. But it's still music. To it. And they don't relate to it. It's still good music. It's still good music. So, you know, shout out to Hilltop Hoods and listen, that's so everybody in the street doing hip hop over there. It's a lot of good music out there. I, I know I noticed there's like a lot of political over there also, a lot of social consciousness, uh hip hop. I mean from what I listen to briefly, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did the Australian switch react to you? Like, what, was it what, were they open arms to you? Well, this is my thing. Like, I I, I lived I lived the you know the, the very common life of young kid growing up, struggling, not having much, um, getting into you know the life of crime in the streets. I was just fortunate enough to be one of the ones that that was able to bounce back and, and go to school. But I lived that life. So originally, when you know Jamaica uh, took. The product up there, they was, you know, they they were skeptical. They they said, "How are we gonna market you? You know, you, you know, you don't really relate, you know, to to what's happening out there. How are we gonna market you? Might be a little bit rough around the edges." So, you know, all we kept doing was, you know, building the fan base, you know, trying to get that brand awareness up, doing shows and and, and making people listen. You know, like of course, I think that um. When you're from Brooklyn, when you're from New York, or in the States in general, when you when you go out to another country, you are in a different light anyway. So we just had to show, you know, what we could do and, and fit in with what what's happening there. Beautiful. And I know they appreciate it too, because yeah. they're hungry out there. Oh, I love, like, the thing about Australia is really where Chase Baker, the artist, was born. They accepted me. They showed love. Like, I, I will always show love and have respect for Australia because, you know, they saw firsthand we, we was in front of thousands and then, you know, packed crowds and and they showed love. You know what I mean? Shout out to all my people in Melbourne holding down too much variety and Chase Baker. Um, we can't do it without y'all. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Um, I was listening to your song, Nice, yeah. and uh, it's a real tough song. Yeah. You put a, you put, in the song you, you make a point of being lyrical. 